everyone and welcome to this presentation video of the Aerobasque Epic Victory. The Epic Victory is designed by Epic Aircraft, um, which uh, ran out of business in 2009. And basically it's a category, it's in the category of the very light jet, uh, since it has a capacity to from three to four or five people, including the pilot. Um, in terms of performance, this plane has a cruise speed something around 250, maximum speed of 320 knots, and the range something around 1200, which is something around 2200 kilometer. Uh, in terms of service ceiling, it's calculated to something up to 28 feet, thousand feet, sorry. Um, all right, so let's close up uh, to this plane here right now. So here you have the design from Aerobasque. Um, they were able to pull up a lot of documentation actually on this one and um, getting the uh, 3D model and shape out of the pod light, um, documentation they could recover. So as usual, the Aerobasque quality in terms of 3D and texturing is very nice. Um, I do a close up now on the texture. As you can see, you have the uh, the screws here. As you can see, uh, you've got people inside. And now we are starting cold and dark. So let's figure out now the um, overall aspect of the plane and the configuration menu. So here you have the option menu, and there you can select and unselect uh, part of the either hide or show the yokes, enable windshield reflection, and enable FS reflection. Um, then you've got weight and fuel management. Um, so what happens here is that you can open the door as we're doing right now, and you see there'll be the luggage cart here. Uh, we'll select 50% of luggage loaded in, in the plane and we'll put passengers including a child here uh, for the purposes of this uh, video. Um, Alright, so um, meanwhile we'll be doing the checklist a bit later on um, to continue then you can hear, we'll do that later about the flag and chokes and so the to do a quick uh, or overall view around the plane just to check the surfaces. And then you've got the GPU control so you can have a GPU um, module that can be linked to the plane and get and prevents you from using the main batteries. Alright, so now let's get inside the plane and start doing the checklist. Alright, so we're in the plane now, in the cockpit, and let's do a quick turn around and show you a bit about the cabin. So you've got some movable objects here, table with a beautiful flight magazine. Um, you've got, as you hear, custom sounds. You've got uh, light, um, 3D lights in the cockpits. Right now it's daytime, so you won't uh, really need it. Uh, we're in we're in Innsbruck, uh, so Lima Oscar Whiskey India in Austria. This is a freeware scenery that you'll find on the org uh, on so the Lowy scenery. Um, all right, so now let's head back to the to the cockpit itself. So here is the cockpit. Um, now we'll be setting up the parking brakes, hiding the yoke because we don't want to have it right now. Um, what we'll be doing now is just powering up the plane um, so we can at least have a few things powered on and lower the flaps to position one. Now this is done, uh, we can actually disable the batteries. So we're getting back to cold and dark. And let's get head outside just to check the plane and make sure that all the surfaces are okay. Well, now, well, the plane is kind of brand new, so we won't need anything else than that. 
surfaces seems to be fine, so we'll now remove the uh, flag and chokes. This is it. All right, so now I'll tell the ground crew to put to power on the GPU. All right, so we've got now good power from the GPU, and the plane itself will be powered on. All right, so let's close everything here, and we can now close the door. As you can see, once the door is closed, you can't change anymore the passenger settings. So you've completed your loading of the plane. As you can see, the GPU is powering up the backup systems. So you've got here the backups, uh, or artificial horizon, and um, an altimeter, uh, including so barometric uh, configuration here. I'll probably set right now. Well, I set later on the bar the barometric pressure actually. Um, so as you can see on the warnings, brakes, door seal, um, the gear warnings, take off. Everything seems to be set. I'm going to put the flaps up again. We don't really need them to be lower down right now. Um, all right. So what I, we can do now is starting the pre-start checklist. So battery on. We'll be powering up the avionics now. Fuel pump. Fuel to left since we have set the both wings have the same amount of fuel, so we'll set the fuel to the left tank. All right. So before we uh, do anything else, let's power on all the instruments here. So basically, this is COM one, COM two, and here you can switch to NAV1 and here NAV2. You've got the three Skyview monitors, so touch screens. Um, you've got here the FS, so the information about the engines, as well as the fuel pressure, uh, all the main systems information. Um, you'll find also useful information as well as the outside air temperature, the actual volts voltage that you have on the batteries and uh, the one receiving from the GPU. Uh, the cabin temperature and here you have your com, uh, active COM selector. You now and then, I forgot something important here, you have the TCAS. So everything about the weather of the TCAS will be managed from this panel. Here you'll have the cockpit lights and obviously you can also work with those directly depending on what you want to do. Alright, since this is daytime, don't really need it. Right now we'll be focusing on the Skyview monitors. So those are 3D and 2D, so you see they're they are clickable and resizable. Um, it's not always easy because my monitor is not really big, but there you go. You're, we're able to recite the sky view. All right, so now let's a bit view all the features that have been implemented in the sky views. So the sky views, the three monitors are exactly the same. They can showcase exactly the same information. So for example, once you have this primary flight display that you've got here, so this is a PFD here, and then you've got the engine information. So it's mostly, I would say, um, the engine panel is mostly here, so you can, you, as you can see, most all, almost all the all the panels are clickables. This one is currently hidden behind it, so let me show you a bit. So this one's clickable. You can click on this one too, this one too, this one too. So you can see, uh, you you can basically click on any panel, and and those panels have two D uh, have two D pop ups. Okay, so about the primary flight display. So we'll be focusing on the one from the pilot. Um, here you got the screen. So screen management, everything can be set up directly from all those buttons. Um, 
A quick overview on the feature you've got here is that if you click on this one, basically you can set uh, whatever you want those knobs to control. So you can set them to control altitude or to control heading or to control course. So you will have to probably manage those during flight depending on your needs. About the screen features. Right now, as you can see, we've got the primary flight display. Um, so you've got the information about the current LD, altitude, uh, speed, and well, most of the information you find on any let's say G1000 or, or Liner F, uh, PFD. Um, you can select what you want to display. Uh, so right now I can unselect the uh, information about the fuel displays, engine displays, monitoring uh, display. Um, I could also add a third here uh, information panel which is the map. So basically the same one as here but let's say more focused on the plane and with uh, so it's a bit depends on what you want to see um, you can change the layout here so you can here click and and so you can uh, swap the the screens depending on your liking and you can here for example uh, unselect the um, I'll probably set uh, here the PFD and for example here what I'm going to do is click on the screen and change it to map plus fuel display and this is it so well uh, so we'll have a full uh, PFD here um, all right so let's head back um, about the PFD features so here you can set the so here you have the uh, RMI plus navigation display and so you can set here the two um, navigation uh, reference that you'll select. So localizer one, for example, so it can be VOR, localizer, whatever. Um, so you'll be displaying with those two. So they'll be basically pointing at the um, VOR or localizer. Well, mostly VOR. Then you've got here the source for navigation. So currently, so the HSI source. So you can select localizer one, two, or the sky view, which stands basically for the GPS route. So this is it for the PFD. Now, uh, as you can see, we have autopilot. So this is an autopilot quick display. Um, here you can activate, deactivate the autopilot features, main features. So activate the autopilot, activate flight director, uh, maintain roll, maintain pitch, and here again the same thing is about changing about the uh, navigation source. Transponder. Transponder is set here, so you will have um, here the settings from this transponder. So right now we'll set it to standby. You can here select IFR. You will see a bit about that later on. You've got the code, so for example, you can select it if you're in Europe and VFR, so you can set it to 7000, and then uh, you can click, for example, back to 2000 since we'll be flying IFR for this uh, flight tutorial. And then you can obviously change the uh, current setting if it's on ground, on altitude, whatever. Now about the tools. Tools is basically the tools that you'll be needing during your flight. So here is the time management. So you can here, for example, set the time display to Zulu or local. Then you've got the timer. So basically it's t it replaces the timing. And you can either start the stopwatch, stop it, restart, and reset. And if you want to see the time current time, then you unselect the timer. Communication. Well, here you can also um, manage your communication panel uh, as you already have here the uh, communications here. So you can display comms one, two, plus one and two. If it's active, it's the one and plus one plus two for standby. So you see all the frequencies, and you can basically review uh, the communication panel. Uh, if you prefer, you can use those ones. This is linked all together anyway, and flip also the frequencies directly from the uh, from the sky view. 
Alright, so this is about it. We'll be now switching now to the other screen here. Alright, so let's now focus on the map because we have not reviewed it already. Um, so let's review now the map features. So with the map, uh, the map relies on the explained data. So if you have data updated, obviously it will have the latest information in terms of the of uh, Airax. So don't forget to update your Airax if you have the ability to do it. All right. So here you can then display information. For example, you can display information about the nearest uh, airfields, airports that are in the vicinity of your plane. Currently, obviously, we are in Innsbruck, so it would, would display Innsbruck because we're on it. And then it will display all the um, closest uh, airports that you have in the vicinity. Then you've got info. This information panel here is basically to show you the, um, so for example, LOWE, which stands for airports. So we'll be selecting this one. And so it shows you the information about the uh, current airport. Um, you can display main information, elevation, uh, GPS coordinates, if it has tower, transition altitude, you can see it here, really important when you don't have the maps um, with you, uh, bearing of the runway, and then the distance that you're from the center of the uh, the reference point from this uh, from this uh, airport. Then you've got runner information. And then you've got comms. So you will have all the frequencies that are set currently, though it reads out the information directly from Xplane. All right, so, and if you want to reset, to another point, then you got to exit from info and get back inside, and then you can, uh, for example, um, NDB station here, which will be your first navigation point one we was once we've answered our uh, route. So you can get information also about uh, fixed point, navigation aids, VOR, NDB, whatever. Okay, so now we jump to the. Um, let's go. Before we head up to the flight plan, because we'll be using this one to set up the flight plan, uh, let's go to map menu. The map menu basically helps you setting the map display, so you can either use the heading up or the north up, depending on your preference. Um, then you can select what you want to display on the map, so airports, VOR, NDBs, for now, will avoid having the fixes point on the map. Then you can select a port or sea base depending on the type of airfield that you want to land on. Well, this plane is only able to land on airports, not a port or sea base. But if you need a reference, then you can also display those ones if you have visual on the land and you want to get a reference. Then you've got infos. Basically, infos will change the uh, information display you have here. So you can select the select information. So as you see, um, it will uh, display or hide uh, the information that you have uh, here. All right, so let's head back and go back to flight plan. All right, so I have a flight plan prepared. And I will right now import it. What you need to know about the um, flight plan is that you can't. There for now with the version with the first release 1.0. Um, I forgot the disclaimer. The video I'm shooting now is based on the version which is a pre-release version. Uh, some probably some things that you will see here will be fixed uh, if if not working correctly. Up to now, all the squeaks and bugs I've figured out during my flights have been fixed by the authors. Obviously we cannot run all the tests on this plane and there will be some things probably you will see. In terms of features, um, as this 
as this current rupees and the point one point oh when this video is being shot, um, you won't have the uh, ability to fill in SIDs and stars. Uh, the only thing that you'll be able to right now uh, set is the flight plane itself. So you'll be able, as you as we'll see, sorry, um, is that we are able to set waypoints, delete waypoints, uh, do directs to waypoints, um, select departure runway and arrival runways. Uh, but there are no there are no SIDs, there are no stars, and there are no approach procedures right now set in the um, the uh, the sky view. So um, all right. So let's select the flight plan. I've already set up the uh, in the citizen star directly in my flight plan, so I don't need to uh, put them uh, directly. Um, as you can see here, we can cycle through the waypoints to check that we've got everything that we need. Seems to be okay. As per my flight, um, and then on each and every waypoint, for example, if we click on Lowy, we can right now select departure, um, and we for now we can only select the uh, runway. So yeah, it will only display here the runway zero eight, um, but there are no departure procedure, standard departure procedure right now. Uh, as per the other features, you can see insert waypoint, remove waypoint, direct to waypoint if you need to activate the leg, um, reverse flight plan, delete to end, and delete flight plan. Okay, so now we exit. There we go. Um, so we have our flight plan. If we want to cycle through our flight plan, we can zoom in here, zoom out there as you can see now if I want to have north up I can show you a bit more about the flight plan and then you'll see here the route is displayed in white and any active leg will be um, magenta alright so for now I don't really need my flight plan I will let the uh, plane fly uh, the route directly and I will zoom in again alright okay so we can close now the um, map view and well focus now on our startup procedure alright so now we are before starting the engines so before we start the engine we are currently running on the GPU, so GPU is active. What we're going to do is that we have selected the fuel tank, so everything's fine. The fuel pump is on, which is okay. Um, we're going to start the engine, so let's pull up now the FS page just to control the um, the engines and start. We'll basically be st we waiting for 10% N1, and once we've reached the 10% we can select the initer all right now the engine are active uh, you've heard the pressurization of the cabin so the ca the pressurization the cabin is now active we're going to now select the generator auto fuel select so the plane will auto manage the um, switch from right left to right tank and vice versa we're going to activate the uh, the logic the autopilot uh, uh, logic and also the trim logic okay so now we've done that we can select the initer to off and stop the GPU. GPU has been removed, so everything's fine. Since we're in winter and things might get a bit chilly outside, we're going to set now the lights to taxi since we'll be taxiing. Uh, we'll be setting now the beacon nav 
uh, and set any kind of uh, surface eaters. Um, air conditioning will be on, we'll be eating the cabin. We now have ventilating. And we'll set up the TCAS once we're on the runway. <laughs> so we're not online, uh, which means that I will start taxing uh, directly. So remove knee, I'm now removing now the uh, parking brake. So you see any warning has now disappeared. I'll be selecting now the flaps to take off and start rolling. Okay, so let's now head outside so you can hear a bit about the uh, custom sounds from the engines. We'll be departing from zero right, so we have basically to uh, taxi all the way up there. If we don't get advised by the Airbus before. Well, the Airbus doesn't want to give us away, so we'll just pass by. There we go. That's a bit fast taxi, but anyway. So we'll be now taxiing to runway 08. Don't hesitate to check the charts. I'll probably leave the flight plan that I've used in comments. So if you want to practice this uh, current uh, flight, while well, you'll be able to make it again using the flight plan I've used. Alright, so now we'll be soon getting on the runway. Getting back in the cabin. We're approaching the runway, so now I'll set up on the, uh, the strobes. Landing lights. Don't need the tax lights anymore. We have variable winds, so basically the planes can uh, depart from any runway, well, any direction. Um, Alright, so what we're do being doing now is set the uh, transponder to ALT. And lining up with the runway. Let's check we don't have any more traffic here. There we go. All right, we are ready for takeoff. And set. Engine seems to be responding well. We'll bring the uh, power to something around 95, which should be enough for this takeoff. Um, something around 110, the plane should have enough lift to take off, actually. Alright, there we go. Gear up. Positive climb, gear up. All right, there we go. This plane is really stable in flight. Okay, I forgot to adjust the QNH, which I'm doing now. And now it can retact. Yeah, we're retracting now the flaps. Be careful about the uh, white lights. 
uh, sorry, white band on the speed. What I can do now is I've already already got the uh, sky view. I'm going to select um, well my my altitude will be something around uh, nineteen thousand. Yeah, I'll set it a bit more. All right, so now navigation sets and climbing. Be selecting now. Uh, this is still set on the. Uh, this is altitude, and now I set the. Uh, yeah, I did something wrong with the navigation. So right now, what we could do actually is set the heading back to the waypoint that we need. All right, nineteen thousand. There we go. And we want to climb something around one eighty. All right, so it will respect the the um, the climb rates. Innsbruck is probably not the best departure in terms of it's not really easy. You need to do things really fast. I could have done it by end actually. That would have been gone. Up, that would have gone more smoother than what I've done now. switch back to navigation so it will get back to the navigation here all right so now we can refine a bit the altitude since it's 19,000 um, once we reach 11,000 we'll be um, we'll be on we'll be switching back to standard um, barometric altitude So now the plane is uh, getting back on track, and we're still within good boundaries in terms of uh, climb rate, so it should be enough. Uh, in terms of scenery, right now what you can see is Ultra HD Alps scenery, working fine on my system to be honest, I haven't tried it with any other bigger planes, but it really looks astonishing I would say. Um, Forest, everything here you can see is uh, top notch in terms of quality. All right, so now we're kind of back on track. Um, as you can see, the future the future legs um, will be passing over now the uh, transition altitude soon enough, and we'll continue our climb up to nineteen thousand. Alright, so I'll see you in a minute once we've reached uh, climb altitude. Oh, sorry, uh, cruise altitude. Alright, so now we're stable at our cruise altitude. So you see it wasn't really long before we reached it. Um, what we'll be doing now is let the, um, the speed rise a bit. We'll try to hit something around 250. Um, I would recommend now, since we are in cruise, that we uh, disable some of the um, anti-ice features. Doesn't seem that we're currently matching uh, icing conditions, so we'll kind of uh, limit the powertrain on the uh, on the engine. And there we go. Uh, what I'm going to do now is bring up the map again, zoom out, scatter a bit the map because it's um, a bit too much information on it. Be removing the uh, 
at ports just to maintain the um, the view on the major uh, points. So what you could do actually is, for example, if you're looking for information for Kilo Papa Tango here, um, you would go to uh, back, then uh, you would go to info, you would select KPT, Kempton, Germany, yep. It's a VOR station, so this is it. And we've got the frequency here, so the 109 decimal 6. So we'll set it here. 109 decimal 6, so it's already pre set up in the standby. So KPT VOR. Now we've got it, and as you can see, um, the arrow has moved and is now pointing at the. Um, at the VR station, it's straight in front of us, which is matching what we've been expecting. Uh, the next one would be we could look for, for example, is Tango Romeo Alpha. Sorry, Tango Romeo Alpha. Yep, Switzerland seems to be the correct place. We and the frequency is 114 decimal 3. So we'll set it on the NAV2. 114 decimal 3. Actually, I could use that, but well, doesn't change much. And there we go. Needle has moved to point the TRA. VOR, which, yep, seems to be correct, it's pointing in the right direction. So here you can monitor actually the um, uh, NAV8 information, and so you can get some uh, some reference point on uh, where you are actually uh, heading, and if everything seems to be uh, to be uh, processing as fine. Uh, you might see a bit of uh, lagging on my side uh, because probably my hard disk is uh, is a bit overloaded right now. But don't worry, this is not the plane causing that. It's because I'm using huge and heavy sceneries. In terms of frame impact, the plane is really smooth. So don't, don't freak out because of that. <laughs> Alright, so what I'll be doing now is doing a direct. So I'll be selecting the flight plan. And the, f the thing I would be probably doing now, I'll be skipping a lot of navigation and uh, do a direct, for example, I wanted to go direct to GVA, so to Geneva. GVA is here. Sorry, is that okay? A bit of lagging. Don't worry. And we're going to the direct waypoint. It asks you if you want really to do that. You can select OK. If you got like a t ATC instruction, then you would probably need to do direct like that. Well. There's a lot of lagging, sorry for that. Scenery causing that. Mostly. So you can see now we're doing direct to Geneva. Plane is trying to get back on track, which seems fair to me.
and will not correct and roll out of it. Yeah, scenery seems to be causing a bit of lag, I'm sorry. Okay, so now we've done, I've shown you the direct, um, and everything seems to be behaving smoothly up to now. Okay, so I'll be right back once we've reached uh, closer to Geneva. Alright, so now we are a few miles from Geneva and we'll start our descent. So we'll be reducing speed now. Um, I'm aiming an altitude of 6500. Something about it, yes. And I'll start my descent now. So I'll take a check uh, vertical speed and set the vertical speed right now. Something around 12. You have this line here that helps you getting the proper Approaching information in terms of uh, where you'll be aiming. So I'll be getting a lower, a lower uh, vertical speed because right now this is not enough probably a bit too fast in terms of vertical speed, but anyway. We should be being a bit harder, but the speed is okay, so... No big issues on that. Right now what we can do is we'll get the information on or arrival airport which is Lima Fox Lima Bravo and we'll get the runway ILS information so the runway ILS is 109.5 and the course is 176.109.5 so we'll set that to our so let me first get a bit up and we'll reduce a bit the uh, vertical speed we don't need that much we'll set now the information here to 1095 which is the case here you won't see any information because this is a localizer we'll wait for um, and yeah we need to set of course right after that to 176. I'll preset my heading to match the one we'll be taking on this white leg here. Meanwhile, what I can do is um, get information, for example. Yeah, no, it's okay for I leave the map like that. And we can review our flight plan. Approaching waypoint. What we need to be is at least on Pino we need to be at the target altitude, which will be probably okay. Seeing the current information we have. I'll preset the prim primary flight display. Uh, we'll be now turning. Checking out now. We have visual on the ground anyway. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'll set the heading mode. So now it's set to heading mode. It's following the heading and still descending. 
Uh, I'm going to switch now to localizer one, so we have the information on the Sierra. I'm uh, sorry, on the Charlie Yankee ILS information. I'll preset the course to one. I'm doing that. We'll do it like that. One seven six. And we could actually disable the flight plan and get back to our map menu, show items, airport. Waypoint. And now a good thing would be probably to get the, sorry, to get the map into north up. We'll be passing the mountain, and I guess once we've passed the mountain, we should get at some point the um, information. All right, localizer live. Speed is being, is reducing, so we'll be continuing to reduce speed until we've reached the uh, 6,500. Well, we say like that. I'll set now the Q and H to local altitude. All right, and now I'll set the localizer. Approaching waypoint. So we'll be waiting to um, capture the localizer here. Okay, so now plane has captured the localizer and it will be turning left at some point. Speed is still reducing, I think we can now get a bit more travel. And I've probably set my view. I should be at some point over the lake. Yeah, you see the lake there. And now you see Light Slope is alive. We can maintain the speed a bit. Until we intercept the localizer. The thing which is great about this plane is that you are able to do really slow approach on airfields. So we'll be probably touching down something around 110, 100, which would be probably safe for this kind of landing. But I've already tried to land at a, a speed around 95, 90, even 85. Okay, so we'll be back once the localizer will be alive.
Okay, we're back and now Glatso is captured. We're going to lower the speed here. Back to approach. A bit too fast actually for this kind of uh, and the descent here is a bit tough uh, to be honest uh, there are no air brakes on this plane so whenever you can anticipate reducing speed even with uh, idle you see the, uh, the descent itself is really really uh, hard on the uh, on the speed I'm getting a bit too much speed actually. I'll be lowering now the gears. Gear down. Which will help me reducing speed. I'm still throttle idle. Landing lights. Okay, so I'll be now lowering the flaps. Flaps over speed. Oh, a bit too much, sorry. I'll probably need to wait 150 until we can uh, do something with the flaps. So we have low visibility actually on the airfield, which will stand for an actual real uh, IFR landing. All right, we start to see the runway now. Flaps over speed. And uh, where it's now it's reducing speed for sure. Still capturing the glide. Still on the glide. And now to full. You see the uh, speed as yeah uh, is being impacted directly. Yeah. Really, the impact on the speed is really uh, is uh, is really high uh, with its full flaps. So we'll still be um, monitoring that. 1, I have visual on the airfield. What I will do is I will continue disconnect the autopilot and continue manual. I'm a bit below the glide, so I'll raise the nose a bit. Put a bit more power. Five hundred. Four hundred. And we'll be landing short. Okay, you see we are something around 100 and it's still really fine. 20, 10. There we go. We've done it safely. There are no reverse, so you need to brake. 
the runway is a bit slippery unfortunately since it's mostly wet now I see probably in this region alright flaps up and we'll be exiting the uh, runway Okay, let, let me park here. We'll, we'll be putting ourselves a bit aside the, uh, the runway to close this session. Fuel tank switched. There we go. Parking brake. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, tutorial video on the epic victory i hope it helped you understanding most of the systems and will mostly help you also flying the plane hope to see you soon in the next video with another plane another aerobus creation who knows thank you for watching and uh see you soon